Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, this Friday, we the believers of Jesus Christ of the entire planet observe it as Good Friday. So what is the significance of Good Friday and what it actually means? This day marks the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. The one who divided the historical timeline was killed on the cross on the Mount of Calvary. So how can this calamitous event be called as good and the death of the person be called as good and what is so good about Good Friday? The master of the universe, the creator of the universe has created everything and also man and he set up few guidelines for the well-being of mankind. This guidelines, usually referred to as law in the Holy Bible, was perfect, holy, flawless and is of divine and heavenly standards as it is said in psalms 19 and verse 7 the law of the lord is perfect but as to man to whom god has given free will to choose between life and death blessing and curse man be being weak in his flesh has quickly fallen from the divine standards as it is said in Isaiah 53 and verse 6, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. But how? Because the very thought and imagination of man's heart are only evil continually. And so the wickedness of the man is so great upon the earth. As it is said in Genesis verses 5 and 6. And according to Romans 3 and 23, all of us has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But now, the wages of sin is death as it is referred to in Romans 6 and 23. Here in this verse, it is said, the wages of sin is is death so we are all bound to death because we all have gone astray but here the story turns in continuation of the verse here it says the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life a great exchange of death to eternal life Let me explain you this. Yes, God is a righteous judge and He is indeed our Father, our Creator. But He cannot compromise His judgment. But He is a fa loving Father too. He can't let His child die and perish because of sin and weakness. At this point, He can't compromise His judgment he can't lose his child. At this junction, he has planned and constructed a way of salvation. He made the judgment clear, but sparing his child, he took the judgment upon himself. So, cross is a great exchange of our punishment, our sin, our death onto the Creator, and we were spared, promised and given life and life eternal. So cross is not a burden to carry. Instead, it's a place where you lay off all your burden, burden of sin and the punishment of sin. In addition to this, great exchange also includes some other points which I would let you know. There was there were two thieves on either side of the cross of Jesus. Because of the pain of the cross, they were both angry and envious. But Jesus endured his peace and he has forgiven all those who are troubling him on the cross. So there was an exchange for an anger and envy to peace and forgiveness. The journey of the cross has included shame and reproach. 
but Jesus has promised glory and restoration in exchange. There was darkness upon the whole planet and death was in the cross. But through a resurrection, there was great light and their life was restored back. Jesus said he thirsted on the cross to give us in exchange to give us the fountain of living waters. Because he was made sin for us, he was forsaken by the Father. But now he has promised us the Holy Spirit through whom we can have continuous presence of God. As a human being, in the human form, Jesus was limited in some areas. Like, For example, he was limited to Israel when he came as man. But now, after resurrection, he, was, he is made unlimited. Now we are given access to to his unlimitedness now we are redeemed even from the bondage and the burden of law not that we are not under the law or not we are bound to the law not that we need not fulfill the law but by his strength we fulfill the law much more now and we are bestowed the blessings of abraham upon us and he is made poor so that we are made rich. And because of his poverty, through his riches of glory, prosperity is promised to us. He was stripped of his garments. Shame of nakedness was upon him to give us the garments of salvation and praise. The crown of thorns was put on his head to crown us with the crown of honor. The burden of sin was broken upon us. The yoke of righteousness and holiness was laid upon us. Finally, death and sin were conquered. Victory and everlasting life were promised. This actually is the cross. So cross is not a burden to carry. Instead, it's a place where you lay off all your burden. This great is the salvation which God has promised upon the cross. And this is the salvation that God has promised to us. As said in Hebrews 2 and verse 3, If we ignore and if we neglect such a great salvation, how can we escape? Jesus made the way of salvation so simple. Believe Him. Believe His work on the cross. Claim Him. Claim it. Claim the salvation. Receive the salvation. Don't despise Jesus. Don't despise the cross cross is not the shame it's a glory let's pray lord jesus whoever is listening to this sermon open their eyes of understanding keep them close to the cross help them acknowledge the work on the cross help them claim it for their salvation seal them with your blood lord in jesus name i pray amen and amen Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, this Friday, we the believers of Jesus Christ of the entire planet observe it as Good Friday. So what is the significance of Good Friday and what it actually means? This day marks the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. The one who divided the historical timeline was killed on the cross on the Mount of Calvary. So how can this calamitous event be called as good and the death of the person be called as good and what is so good about Good Friday? The master of the universe, the creator of the universe has created everything and also man and he set up few guidelines for the well-being of mankind. These guidelines usually referred to as law in the Holy Bible was perfect, holy, flawless and is of divine and heavenly standards as it is said in psalms 19 and verses 7 the law of the lord is perfect but as to man to whom god has given free will to choose between life and death blessing and curse man be being weak in his flesh has quickly fallen from the divine standards as it is said in Isaiah 53 and verse 6, We all like sheep 
have gone astray but how because the very thought and imagination of man's heart are only evil continually and so the wickedness of the man is so great upon the earth as it is said in genesis verses 5 and 6 and according to romans 3 and 23 all of us has sinned and fallen short of the glory of god but now the wages of sin is death as it is referred to in romans 6 and 23 here in this verse it is said the wages of sin is death so we are all bound to death because we all have gone astray but here the story turns in continuation of the verse here it says the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life a great exchange of death to eternal life let me explain you this yes god is a righteous judge and he is indeed our father our creator but he cannot compromise his judgment but he is a fa- loving father too he can't let his child die and perish because of sin and weakness at this point he can't compromise his judgment he can't lose his child at this junction he has planned and constructed a way of salvation he made the judgment clear but sparing his child he took the judgment upon himself so cross is a great exchange of our punishment our sin our death onto the creator and we were spared promised and given life and life eternal so cross is not a burden to carry instead it's a place where you lay off all your burden burden of sin and the punishment of sin in addition to this great exchange also includes some other points which i would let you know there was there were two thieves on either side of the cross of jesus because of the pain of the cross they were both angry and envious but jesus endured his peace and he has forgiven all those who were troubling him on the cross so there was an exchange for an anger and envy to peace and forgiveness the journey of the cross has included shame and reproach but jesus has promised glory and restoration in exchange there was darkness upon the whole planet and death was in the cross but through resurrection there was great light and their life was restored back Jesus said he thirsted on the cross to give us in exchange to give us the fountain of living waters because he was made sin for us he was forsaken by the father but now he has promised us the holy spirit through whom we can have continuous presence of god as a human being in the human form jesus was limited in some areas like for example he was limited to israel when he came as man but now after resurrection he was he is made unlimited now we are given access to his unlimitedness now we are redeemed even from the bondage and the burden of law not that we are not under the law or not we are bound to the law not that we need not fulfill the law but by his strength we fulfill the law much more now and we are bestowed the blessings of abraham upon us
and he is made poor so that we are made rich and because of his poverty through his riches of glory prosperity is promised to us he was stripped of his garments shame of nakedness was upon him to give us the garments of salvation and praise the crown of thorns was put on his head to crown us with the crown of honor the burden of sin was broken upon us the yoke of righteousness and holiness was laid upon us finally death and sin were conquered victory and everlasting life were promised this actually is the cross so cross is not a burden to carry instead it's a place where you lay off all your burden this great is the salvation which god has promised upon the cross and this is the salvation that god has promised to us as said in hebrews 2 and verse 3 if we ignore and if we neglect such a great salvation how can we escape jesus made the way of salvation so simple believe him believe his work on the cross claim him claim it claim the salvation receive the salvation don't despise jesus don't despise the cross cross is not the shame it's a glory let's pray lord jesus whoever is listening to this sermon open their eyes of understanding